good evening friends uh, once again we are here to uh, have a very wonderful episode related to uh, different health modalities which you can utilize for yourself on your own and this is uh, our episode 2 in the series uh, we already had one episode on introduction to tai chi with uh, dr lily barbi from australia and this august we are bringing you one more episode again with her uh, related to qigong also known as qigong in india and i am sure many of you are not very much aware about uh, this particular method of alternative healing so uh, our purpose of starting the series is to make people aware that there are a lot of uh, self help uh, modalities and um, a lot of self healing tools available uh, which you can try learn and then later on practice for your different diseases and also for your mental health which will keep you much more better and prevent the chronic and acute diseases spread inside your body so once again i welcome you all on behalf of our rutuja foundation and now is the time to welcome dr lily hello Hello, Dr. Lily. How are you? Good. How are you, Dr. Nahal? Yeah, it's like been some time. Uh, we are meeting after uh, like few more days. You uh, know, passed off and maybe fifteen, twenty days uh, off when we met last for Tai Chi, and we met in July, and this is August, almost uh, about to strike the mid-August. So once again, I welcome you on behalf of the found. Asian and India, you took out such a good time for us uh, in the midnight of Australia to talk to people around. So that's really wonderful, and we are really grateful for the session that you gave for Tai Chi. It was very interesting for people, and I'm looking forward for even Kigong today you know, for the same. Uh, It's my pleasure. Hope you also. Have, yeah, hope you're having the same good time with us. Absolutely, absolutely. I could talk about this stuff all day and night. Apparently, yeah. yes, yes. So, friends, uh, Dr. Lily is um, a practitioner for Chinese medicine, and she's trained into Qigong and Tai Chi, uh, different forms, uh, you know, of uh, martial arts which can help in healing. Which are all the one which are basically uh, dealing with the energy flow inside your body. So, uh, the concept goes. all with how you channelize your energy and utilize it in a balanced way so this is another technique that she is going to discuss with us today and share her experience and she is an extremely passionate uh, person who uh, you know loves uh, qigong like anything so i'm sure you all are going to have lot of good time listening to um, you know uh, dr lily so lily just tell us uh, what this actually Qigong means what? What do you mean by this? So, if we break down the word Qigong or Qigong, um, we have two basic components. We have the word Qi and the word Gong. So, Qi refers to this vital life energy that we see all around us every day. It's important to associate Qi with life. Because that's ultimately what we're working with in our own bodies. We don't perform qigong when we're deceased. We perform it while we're alive to cultivate life force. So you can see the second word is skill achieved through effort, training, practice, cultivation, work. So qigong is literally just practicing and working and cultivating your life energy. oh that's really wonderful to uh, note and um, very interesting that it is such a simple thing but so effective for the body so i'm sure just like tai chi this also must have come through some some particular concept phenomena from the past and there must be some history linked up with qigong also so uh, where this qigong has come up into is it just a chinese origin or it's actually come coming from some other country what what exactly it comes from so in the earlier dynasties of china we see before china even became china 
and was a series oh. of, of broken up states before it was completely unified, we see practices like Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, including meditation, including breathing, including simplified movements. So we can see that from this slide, the history of Qigong dates back around 5,000 years to the Han Dynasty in particular. For practices including Dao Yin, Yang Shen, Yang Shen and Zuo Chan. So these are different types of meditations and movements of different speed, of different dynamic force, and they have all come under the umbrella of Qigong. So you can see in that last point there, in 1953, Qigong was adopted widely as a formal name for these exercises. So the practices that we see now around us as Qigong have, of course, all been um, standardized. Okay, okay. So uh, there must be some more research also onto this, and then people must have uh, written something about Qigong, uh, you know, in days to come. Absolutely. There are lots of clinical trials out there which are investigating the benefits. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there, where India is missing uh, its arts, we now we are doing little work on yoga and the you no know, asanas coming from the yogic uh, scriptures, and we try to figure it out actually how the health benefits are opening. But there is there is very less clinical work with reference to yoga in India. So I really appreciate that at least China mm -hmm. is doing this that. It's bringing its uh, all this ancient martial art techniques and doing some good clinical trials and putting it on research that it's so effective. This this is really wonderful to note. Absolutely, China's history, both ancient and modern, is really really fascinating because, in their attempt to survive on the modern stage against all of Europe and the West, they have really kept up their medical system to include modern principles and ancient principles. So Qigong is something that is not unknown in hospitals in China, especially for rehabilitative services, post-cancer treatment, um, looking at patients that have had heart problems or have gone through surgery, using Qigong as something to help them recover in a hospital, approved by people in white coats. <laughs> This is wonderful to note because here there are there are so many systems of medicine, but they never come together on same platform for treatment. Mm -hmm. If you are going for allopathic medicine, they would never encourage you to go for Ayurvedic medicine. If you take that, they would never encourage to go for some other form. So there is there are all parts. They all work in parts and bits, but they don't want to come together for healing of the patient. That's so very I really true. Appreciate that. Yeah, this is a good thing that uh, you know, Chinese hospitals are taking the help of ancient uh, science uh, and then utilizing it for post-treatment uh, you know, of something like cancer. That's really wonderful uh, to note. And so people who are listening, uh, you should note that you are not learning a health modality, which is like, oh, this is something ancient. It, it might work. It might not work. No, it, it's not like that. It has its uh, significance. It is very beneficial and it's already proven by research. So you know, we are not talking about some fake medicine. We are actually talking about a tool which is very, very uh, useful and it is already been accepted worldwide. That's exactly right. When we yeah. talk about Qigong research and Qigong trials, we're talking about randomized controlled trials. We're talking about legitimate setting of testing this kind of stuff in in different groups of people wow that's really wonderful to note even this was new to me that uh, the hospitals consider uh no qigong so important a uh, tool like we have acupressure Absolutely. indian system has acupressure indian system has pranic healing uh things and all but like they are not allowed in the hospitals and in the hospital staff would never ever know about something they consider it to be like, like a superstitious fake thing like no this, this is not going to cure or not going to heal you know things like that so i think in i live in a small this. town and yeah they think sometimes yeah. the same 
together. Yeah, they should come together and uh, use the science in this way so that more healing can be done. It's so good to good to know this. So, uh, on what basic principles the Qigong works? How does it work actually? So, for Qigong, we have a few different principles that are laid down that the standard layperson can understand. We have principles of breathing. We have principles of the posture and form and movement itself. So the mechanics of are the arms going up and down? What are the legs doing? What is the upper back and shoulders doing? Um, and then the third point is mindfulness, being very, very aware of the practice that you're doing. It is not the kind of thing where you, you know, play rock and roll music in the background and you get completely yeah. distracted by music. It's something that is most beneficial when you spend that time listening to your body. Because it's nice to listen to music while you do Qigong, but you can't hear your neck crack. You can't tune in to the wrists, the bones in your wrists moving and grinding, you know. And then the next day, how can you compare? You know, listening to your body is a huge thing that we don't do. Yes, it's it's very, very true. When I teach in the class, I uh, ask the students to uh, know become more aware about uh, how your body is responding to you. Because now this is a big issue. Most of them, they are into their mobile phones and uh, mm. they have a very, very fast life. So they are preoccupied yeah. mentally. And they are never a big, no aware about what's actually the body is telling them. So I yeah. think that awareness is overall missing. Uh, for those who are doing jobs, they are preoccupied mentally to achieve their deadlines. So they also don't pay much attention on their body. But um, this is good that during doing these exercises, you have to be more focused on your body and you try to listen i think that brings a closeness to your, your own self somewhere and you start Absolutely. understanding your body yourself more better because you are there with yourself so you know, which is what is you no know, required in present day this is not much seen so you no know, these this even you mentioned that the there is a need uh, the principle is also going to focus on the postures so uh, i I'm sure there are very less um, uh, no, uh, exercises or rather exercises, uh, some medical aspect where they actually pay attention on postures because most people I have come across, they hardly uh, pay attention that whether they have a correct posture or not. First of all, they don't know the concept of posture. If they know it, they don't know whether their posture is correct or not. So, uh, this is something really wonderful for those people who who don't have an attention on posture particularly. And uh, they fail to understand that incorrect postures can lead to so many diseases. That's exactly right. And it's such a simple thing to correct. But I think you really hit the nail on the head. Not too many people know what correct posture is or what it looks like or what it feels like. And I think a lot of women are inclined to slouch their shoulders and hunch their shoulders forward yes. in an attempt to hide womanly curves when really we should be nice and upright, you know, without being obnoxious about yes. it. We can protect our spines, which men and women have. Exactly, exactly. But that's not happening usually. It's, it's a yeah, very, very yeah. bad habit. Yeah, it's a bad habit. Definitely, it's a bad habit. So uh, once if I want to learn Qigong, like how, what's the importance? How it's going to be beneficial to me? So the importance of Qigong is huge. It has a, a range, basically, depending on who you're talking to. Um, so we have a look at, this particular slide, which has information from the perspective of a Chinese medicine practitioner. So the question is going to elicit a different answer depending on the person that you're talking to. So for me, the importance of Qigong is about health. It's about longevity. It's about 
taking care of myself and possibly having the power to do something a little more than just cross my fingers. So Qigong practice can regulate and harmonize body organ systems and their associated emotions. These exercises are rooted in traditional Chinese medicine, which highlights the prevention of illness rather than late intervention. So for me as a Chinese medicine practitioner, there's a stage that people can get to in their health when my job becomes so, so, so difficult because there are so many little things that that person is in control of that determines what goes on with their health. Um, so Qigong is a way for, for people to take that control back and get back in the driver's seat. Okay, okay. So uh, in the slide that you are showing, there is a word that it is the one to regulate uh, the organs associated with emotions. So uh, like uh, which organ is related to what kind of emotions? Is there a specific uh, you know, a kind of list that every organ has some emotion to say? Because usually we understand that emotions are all mental and it has a you no know, mind which which is going to you know, express emotions. But like as per your slide, it's also the organs which are linked up with emotions. So how that is possible? So for the Chinese, they have a a cycle of five elements or what they call the Wu Xing cycle. So with this cycle of five elements or five phases we see the organs of the body associated in these different five. And then they also have five emotions attached to them as well. So for example, the heart is associated with joy. The lungs have an association with grief and with sadness. Kidneys have an association with fear. The stomach has, and the spleen have an association with um, overthinking and worry, which which a lot of people can make sense of straight away because if you're very worried or if you're overthinking a lot, it's hard to digest. It's hard to push food down when all of the energy is up. Um, and then we also have anger associated with the liver and gallbladder. So in this cycle of elements and organs and emotions, we have this correlation which basically says that every organ has a job to do. Every emotion has a job to do. And it's only when things are in conflict and there's no harmony that disease can then arise from this. So Qigong's specific intention and importance is to help everything flow in a harmonious way without the individual having to overthink it. The individual doesn't have to worry or change how they express anger. After practicing Qigong, even after a few months, you can't help but express anger differently because everything's moving differently inside you and you don't know it. <laughs> wow, that's that's good for those who are not able to tackle anger. It's it's very difficult for many to, even when they know they, it, they are not able to control. It, it is really a vicious cycle that they actually go into. So uh, this is really good, and uh, I uh, I have come across a lot of uh, digestion issues just because of worry. Because I think uh, the second nature of women is to be anxious and to be worryful. <laughs> That's how most of the women are. They are highly anxious and they keep worrying. They're very worrisome, uh, no people. So uh, wonderful yeah. report again. Yeah. Even when there's there nothing are... to worry about, we'll find something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It has become the nature for them to keep on worrying and uh, remaining anxious about the, the aspect. So uh, this is really good. It, it helps in regulating. But then do I need some background to uh, study or learn Qigong? Are there any prerequisite like only some people can do it or I need to like do some exercises prior, then only I can learn Qigong. Is there something like that? So that's the exciting thing about Qigong is that anyone can learn it. Um, and you can see there I've written any living person can learn Qigong. So this is the important thing for us to all, yeah, for us to have this association with Qi and life. 
um, because chi exists in in all forms and it's all around us as life. But it's it's this life force that we yeah. can really interact with and impact. So the internal conditions and the channels can only be perceived by those who can see things by inward vision. So it touches on that same concept uh, of mindfulness, that when we have a million and one distractions in the environment, it's hard to have that inward vision. Yeah, yeah. So anybody can um, know, learn this uh, particular yeah. thing. It's it's that simple. That some, and is it like at any age you can learn this? It's definitely for any age. Qigong is actually oh, right. more renowned for being known amongst um, practitioners who are retiring from injuries, practitioners who are looking to rehabilitate themselves. So Qigong is very soft and gentle. Young children can do it. Pregnant women can do it. Elderly people can do it. Wow. So even the uh, pregnant women can do it. Uh, with any trimester, it's, it's okay to go with. It's quite safe. As long as there are no individual uh, contraindications from your personal doctor. Um, and of course, that's the best thing to do when you're starting a new venture, if you happen to be pregnant as well, to double check with your treating physician or gynecologist or obstetrician to see if that's an appropriate move for you. Um, but even, even this can be considered Qigong. So wow. pregnant women can can do this. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so once, once practitioners and doctors understand that it's very gentle and it's very easy and it's just a way to move chi, move vital energy, it's easy. Pregnant women, little kids. Wow. And um, is it like you need to have a... Like you should do it outdoors only, or it has it can be done indoors. Somebody is not able to uh, like you no know, stand for a long time. So how how it's done actually? Qigong can be done anywhere, inside, outside, standing, seated. You can do qigong even laying in your bed, because as we saw from that earlier slide, qigong encompasses a lot of breathing techniques. Okay. So when we do these certain breathing so techniques, yeah, we don't have to be at at maximal movement. We don't have to be upright. We can still enjoy the benefits of qigong because we're cultivating a part of life, and that's breathing. Wow. So uh, can you suggest like uh, some very simple uh, movement for those who are who are working in the office and they are sedentary workers? They like have to sit for very long time and they are doing a lot of mental work. But then uh, for as in break or you no, know, as in like they can refresh themselves even when they are sitting for long hours and uh, still can channelize themselves to do this activity. I think... For someone who's doing an office job, just that shaking and you can do it seated is very good because the hands and the wrists and the fingers really suffer in a desk job. The shoulders and neck also in particular. And of course, if your back is no good to begin with or if you don't have a good chair. So you have this entire musculoskeletal structure that needs movement and it needs fluid and it needs space between the joints. So if you're working in an office and you have some room, you can, oh, sorry, I'll try and get my camera. You can do like a whole body. Yeah, and, oh. Oh. yeah I can see you, yeah. So you, can do like, you can do like a whole body type of shake, right? So you can keep your feet yeah. fixed into the ground and you can shake yes. your waist, your shoulders, your neck, and you can move fluid by creating space through the joints where they articulate. Yeah, so I think this is so simple and yet so effective. It's very and, effective and it's, to do movement. It's all about movement. It can, yeah, it can be built right up or scaled right down. So if you can't leave your desk, you know, some people will just naturally shake themselves out. Do this. You know, they don't, they don't need someone to say that's Qigong. They just instinctively know 
that they need to move. So you can in, you can incorporate that into the whole body instead of just the hands. Yeah, that's very yeah. very that's good really for good. clearing chi that's stuck. Yeah, and it's good for those elderly who cannot like do lot of movement because of the age they have achieved, but at least they can shake their hands and the upper body to some extent. That's exactly right. That's ex and the more achievable it is for someone the better the more gentle and slow and soft the better because then you you don't run the risk of injuring yourself by being overzealous yes yes so the uh, it's good to know that almost every kind of person can do it but i'm sure there must be some cases wherein qigong is not advised that they shouldn't do it so uh, who should not uh, do this activity so while qigong is for all age groups there are certain individuals who may feel dizzy or unwell when doing long qigong forms or long qigong sets oh sorry I'll just move that there so it says qigong is not advisable for anyone feeling immediately faint dizzy or unwell however seated qigong is quite suitable in these rare cases so when it comes to low blood pressure, Qigong mm -hmm. is slowing the heart rate down and it's lowering blood pressure. So for people whose blood pressure is already very, very low, they might feel faint, they might feel dizzy. So it's a good time okay. for them to do the seated Qigong and then they can just move their upper body slowly and then there's no risk of falling or fainting. Okay, so I think that also would add that uh, it's a good uh, exercise for those who are suffering from hypertension because it's reducing the blood pressure down. So I this is uh, really good that uh, simple exercises, you don't have to pop up the medicine at least. It's so much of medicine going for high blood pressure. At least in India, we have like it's so common. Uh, every third person has a high blood pressure. So it's a very, very common disease. And in fact, it's no more considered to be disease. It's so common in India. Well, if you, if you think about the term high pressure, that's exactly kind of the world that we live in. It's, it's a high yeah. pressure world. So it makes sense that everyone has high blood pressure. Yes. yes. Everyone's <laughs> oh, under lots of pressure. Lot of lot of pressure we are into, yeah, exactly. So um, this was all about like um, who can learn and who should not learn. But because I'm I'm always concerned about uh, women's health, so how uh, qigong will make difference to women's health? Uh, what 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 kind of benefits uh, they can have, like as in gender, women gender? Yeah. So because qigong is all about movement. And it's all about the correct flow of chi and fluids in the body. When I say fluids, I mean blood specifically. Um, and for women, this is all around the lower dantian area, which is the uterus or the lower abdomen just under the belly button. So we can see from this slide, even though the writing is a bit small, the unique focus of qigong centers around the lower dantian, a ball-shaped area behind below, around the navel. So this area contains mm. many channels and points which activate the uterus, regulate circulating hormones, and stimulate blood flow to sexual organs. Blocked chi and blood flow can affect menstruation, pregnancy and child rearing, and menopause. Qigong can be used to regulate and alleviate many women's health issues. So I've, I've written many women's health issues because there are so many different women's health issues that exist issues. out there in the world. Yeah, We have um, all different types of polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, um, uterine fibroids are something that have impacted me in particular. So women get masses and lumps all the time, especially yeah. when it comes to um, our sexual organs, like breast tissue, like uterine tissue. So keeping yeah, an eye out yeah. for those physical, those physical stagnations are very common 
it's so so common and it's it's a lot of what women do naturally which is bottle things up and repress things and push them way down deep inside because we need to survive and just get on with life yes but as so a does, result does it also yeah yeah continue yeah oh sorry sorry go on no you you finish then i'll ask you the question oh yeah yeah it um it's it's so good for a whole range of women's health issues because of this focus on tantien because of this particular breathing and energy flow which happens to be right around the navel or the center of the body the reservoir of chi the home of chi okay okay yeah so uh, because it also affects the uh, menstruation uh, does does the, does it also help in regulating uh, menstruation because nowadays young girls they have this major issue of irregular periods so would that also be corrected with this exercise it can be uh the reason i say can be is because a lot of women's menstrual issues are intervened with pretty early on with the oral contraceptive pill or with some other form of um contraception so whether that be yeah. you know an insertion or a pill or no matter the form you know some girls get the implanon rod um you know just to regulate their menstruation cycles I think depending on how long you've mm. been exposed to those kind of chemicals and pharmaceutical interventions that's what you're looking at weighing qigong against and and qigong is going to do so much for you but it's not going to stack up against a lot of other synthetic creations that are forcing your body to release certain messages and do certain things yes yes so um, uh, would you suggest like uh, also because mostly women come across whether it is uh, related to menstrual aspect or menopause aspect or postpartum blues because of pregnancy they usually have one issue that is mood change they come across a lot of mood swings going up and down so does that kind of emotional trouble um, be corrected if they learn uh, qigong Yes. Yes, absolutely. I know from my own personal experience that it's definitely helped me a lot. I can be a very impatient and tempestuous kind of person. So it's it's definitely something that helps train you little by little. The slow movements you start to repeat that kind of principle and thinking in all aspects of your life where if you slow down your reaction time it's a little bit yes. easier to catch it's a little bit more manageable from from your end not from the receiving individual because of course when we have these extreme emotions they very rarely do damage to anyone else more than us we're the ones that that suffer so much from these big uproars of emotion So Qigong is very good for slowing things down and settling that process and harmonizing it. Wow, that's really great because there's no medicine to cure this mood swing issue and it's one of the most common problems for women all around the world and uh, it's a, it's actually suffered by women but felt by everybody around her because all people including her kids, husband, family members everybody you know they have the reflection of what her mood swing is uh, undergoing what kind of change she is undergoing so they all have to suffer if she is in bad mood and uh, you know no, nothing can be done about it so this is really good that simple exercises can correct uh, this problem of mood swing and reduce uh, that problem and she can work so nicely so that leads leads me to another question that if it can correct mood swing does it also have a role to play on the emotional aspects of our our body or like as in person uh, can qigong also bring some emotional wellness qigong is very transformative 
um, and it's very, very popular in um, different mental health regulation plans. So using things like mm -hmm. Qigong and using things like breathing will help establish this emotional well-being. So you can see that Qigong encourages inner reflection and meditation. Qigong encourages slow, simple breathing and movement. So in a world where everything mm -hmm. is high pressure and everything is very complicated, it helps us accept the simple, accept the slow, mm -hmm. accept the, the little moments instead of this big rush of pressure and force and achieve, 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 ambition, ambition, ambition. Um, and then you can see create structure, discipline and clear perspective. Hmm. Wow. So it does have so much of a role to play um, such simple exercises. So I can just not wait. Uh, can you demonstrate something uh, with Kigong for maybe um, anger control and maybe some mental detox uh, so, so that at least we can practice those things and then further you know, uh, go in the detail of the Kigong for learning it? Absolutely. So the most common Qigong form um, for anger control comes out of one of my favorite sets, which is known as Bajuan Jin. Bajuan Jin is eight movements. So the name Bajuan Jin actually means eight silk brocades or eight pieces of silk or eight treasures. The idea just references eight things that are precious or very valuable. So the Chinese use Baduan Jin as like the Swiss army knife of Qigong. If you want to work all the meridians in the body, all the points in the body, you don't have much time, Baduan Jin. Wow. So that way so you are you actually work showing the, the key, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're showing the key movement, which is so important. Uh, going, it's, it's going to be a treasure for all, yeah? Yeah, I'll show number seven um of of the moves okay. which is designed for uh the liver and for anger okay. i'll just try and get my camera right yeah yeah um so the this particular qigong move starts in a horse stance okay so again for the okay. for the basics of qigong posture you can find them anywhere online any youtube video any website Essentially, you're imagining a string pulling from the top of your head, yeah. straight, straightening the spine. The shoulders are down. The tailbone is a little bit tucked in and feels heavy. So there's a nice dragging sensation which protects your lower back. And then the knees are bent, okay. wider than shoulder width. And then you just yeah. punch. Oh, okay. And then drag and then punch, and then pull back in. So the move seems a little bit complicated, but you're really pushing lots of intention and force as you extend each punch. And the move is called punch okay. and glare. So even with Qigong, there's this intention in the eyes. The eyes aren't just looking here or looking there. There's a very specific And then back okay, in. Okay, yes. So that's very, very good for um, liver and anger and keeping everything flowing smoothly. Okay, so I have one question related to the liver because in many diseases like diabetes and uh, uh, when, when uh, those who are having too much of alcohol, liver sclerosis is also common. And um, uh, people, because of some metabolic issues, sometimes they suffer from fatty liver issues. So would the same exercise work over there for them also? So that kind of exercise would be very, very useful. Usually in Chinese medicine, the way that they talk about organs is quite different to a biomedical yeah. view. So if someone is diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver, there's no guarantee that qigong for the liver will help them. 
it's more likely that someone who is very, very angry and undergoing therapy for anger issues will benefit from Qigong for the liver. Okay. So the approaches okay. of okay. biomedical and Chinese medicine are very different. Okay, okay. So in that case, if somebody is having like a, a fatty liver, it won't be considered. But if it's going to be uh, anger based, uh, no liver issue, then liver will be cured properly. Exactly, exactly. With cirrhosis of the liver, there's usually a very specific disease pathway um, and, and a different breakdown of tissue. So Qigong can absolutely reverse that process depending on what stage it's in but again yes. that's a very very tenuous thing to say to someone you can't just say to someone oh there's a cure for this or there's a cure for that you know a lot of doctors yes. don't like yes. that but there are many many research articles which say that doing overall qigong is good for the liver doing overall qigong is good for reducing inflammation Overall, Qigong is good for promoting circulation. And all of those things would help in a diagnosis like liver cirrhosis. Wow. Yeah. So I get your point that because uh, many people would then just stop taking medicines or create more complication. Uh, it's, it's not advised to label it that it doesn't cure, but that doesn't mean it cannot cure. It can cure if practiced exactly. in a proper way. Yeah, exactly. Then it can surely be. Yeah, so uh, such simple punch exercise and it's, and the movements are really gentle. So I don't think so. Anybody doing Qigong gets fatigued or tired. Well, you can absolutely as you push more into it and you try and see, you know, the the boundaries of your flexibility. But the good thing is, if you're having a bad day or if you're feeling sore or tight, you can minimize it or you can maximize it it's something that is simple enough to change to your mobility range to your comfort yeah wonderful so uh, uh, what should we do for the mental detox so for mental detox qigong a lot of people feel sometimes like they have brain fog or they're not thinking very clearly, or there's a lot going on in their mind. So again, I think that's a pretty common um, bit of feedback from 21st century westernized living. People are in their heads a lot and they're overthinking a lot. Yeah. So this Qigong move, you can shake your hands a little bit and then, and all you're doing is tracing like an imaginary field over your head. So when you breathe in, you imagine fresh energy, yeah? Like combing your hair and washing your face. Yeah. And just by repeating this, even three to six times a day will help because you're using your intention and you're stimulating the energy in your palms through Lao Gong, which is an acupuncture point, into the face, into the mind, into the brain. And you're encouraging that flow comes up, but it also goes down. And sometimes the body forgets yeah. this when we have signs and symptoms like headaches, like brain fog. It's like, it's like the body forgot it has to go down. Down, yeah. So Qigong is almost like re-instructing the body, you know, reminding the body that energy comes up so we can think, but then energy has to come down so we can rest and then back up. Yes. And then back down. Just like in the morning, the sun comes up and then at night, the sun goes down. So if nature knows that, how much more for us? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like actually the it is so the life is so simple, but we have made it unnecessarily complicated. So yes. I think uh, Qigong also teaches us that uh, you go back to the simplicity and 
uh, your so many problems get cured just by following the simple rules of nature so uh, this is so like so simple yet it's a reminder that you cannot always remain in the head in the up position you need to calm down also you know come to a normal resting stage also so uh, uh, wonderful to note uh, lily that you you explain so you make make explanation so simplified and lucid that all those who just don't know anything about energy i'm sure they are going to pick up uh, today's session so well and i'm sure we'll have more people uh, learning qigong now after they uh, know have gone through this wonderful session and i look forward for more of your sessions i'm waiting for you to give us one more session on acupuncture whenever you are free from your patient and treatment and all and um, ah. hopefully that time you can less more about chinese acupuncture theories and you uh, know how it works because many people also doubt uh, acupressure and acupuncture they are not into this systems you uh, know particularly in india there is lot of superstition and a uh, skepticism related to alternative medicines so uh, because there are lots this kind of ancient medicines available but also there are people who don't don't practice it with that purity and that principles taking forward they also do mix practice sometimes malafide practices are there so people get confused and then there is a bad name given to the ancient techniques actually they are really good if they are practiced in the correct way and that is That's the it. motive of our uh, yeah and that that is what we want to bring forth through this series of episodes sharing different kind of uh, techniques to people that there is lots which can help you uh, without going to a doctor if you are doing it on a regular basis in under discipline form and you're consistent to try for your good health support is available you know around you so that's exactly yeah. right so yeah so on that note yeah so uh, any more um, tips or suggestions from your side as in last uh, you no know, keep key points to carry back home for our viewers yeah, the important thing to remember about Qigong is that if you are alive you can do it you can do it <laughs> that's that's the good thing about qigong it reminds us that we're alive it reminds us that there is something special happening that gives us this reaction and and i can do this and i can do this. and and that isn't a miracle to us anymore so if people are out there watching that's all i hope they can really see chigong for that it's a reminder that being alive is a miracle <laughs> yes yes a lucky very one. true yeah. you we are lucky that we are alive exactly exactly so uh, i'm sure they'll carry back this message home and they'll realize that there is more to life uh, rather than just earning money and making a big house or something there's lots more in life uh, which has to be appreciated so and on that note uh, see you soon for the next episode okay i'm waiting for your dates for acupuncture episode to come in and um, we are so glad that uh, in, in the midnight in australia you are here to share such a passionate talk on qigong and looking forward for more uh, from your side so thank you so much uh, lily uh, see you soon in the next episode thank you so much we'll end up the episode here itself uh, goodbye and good night to you i hope you have a good sleep tonight thank you very much thank you thank you for having me thank you bye <laughs> bye bye So friends that was Dr Lily with us in the second episode related to health modalities uh with respect to uh you know uh, qigong and tai chi and all so this this episodes we are bringing to you for uh, your benefit to help you understand that 
there are a lot of this kind of um, uh, new episodes available uh, which will be offering you to youth in the form of some of the other concepts coming on your flow like we are planning to have a discussion on different meditation techniques we are also planning to have some other energy based concepts like the reiki techniques and pranic healing and uh, crystal uh, healing and um, also uh, different meditation techniques like what is heartfulness meditation what is vipassana meditation what is mindfulness uh, meditation so such kind of a uh, different um, Uh, no alternative uh, healing techniques will be introduced to you through this different episodes coming up on your way if you are enjoying uh, and liking the episodes kindly follow us on our instagram uh, rutuja_women or uh, be a part of our facebook you uh, know friends follower list that is rutuja shah we are also available on linkedin and our website is www www.rutuja.org and do not fail to subscribe our youtube channel rutuja like comment share and subscribe thank you so much for your patient listening see you all soon in another episode to come thank you all have a nice time